Good evening and welcome to the Los Alamitos Unified School District Board um, meeting. That would be the thing we're having today. So we are going to call that, so far. Call, so far, we're going to call it to order at, anybody have the time? 404. 404. And Mrs. Dangelo. Mr. Fayette. Here. Ms. Catulli. Here. Mrs. Hill. Here. Mr. Forehand. Here. Mrs. Davidson. Here. And I would look for a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. And I believe that we can just take a vote. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0. And now we will go into our workshop. And our first workshop, or our only workshop, is regarding the STEM building and facilities update, which is we are all very excited uh, to see what you have for us, uh, CJ and uh, Elvia. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, well, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. CJ Nolan, who's going to provide us with an update on the STEM building. And first and foremost, I would like to thank him tremendously because I know this couple of weeks have been extremely stressful and difficult with trying to get the STEM building up and running. But um, go ahead, CJ. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam President, honorable members of the board. I, uh, I second Elvia. It has been pretty stressful. We're really uh, trying to tighten up some loose ends, and I might have a few of my first gray hairs coming in. Uh, but I am really excited to share, uh, share these updates with you because we're almost there, and uh, everything is looking like we will have a fully open building for the start of school, and I want to take you through some of that. Well, um, CJ, they do say the last 10% is the hardest, don't they? <laughs> I, yeah, it's not wrong. <laughs> um, upcoming milestones and events. So really, I wanted to take a more in-depth look at some of the dates that are going to happen along the next month or so. Um, the first, first date we really have is the administrative furniture delivery. So um, if you remember, we ordered our furniture in two groups, our student classroom furniture and then our administrative furniture. We already have our classroom furniture stored on site. And our administrative furniture is our last delivery of furniture scheduled to arrive next week, which is perfect. Um, going on further, we have our final site concrete pour. Um, that'll be the, a strip of concrete or the sidewalk that's located in the very front of the building. So with our concrete pours, we're working from the interior of the campus to the exterior. Um, you wanna do it that way so you're not having to drive over any new concrete to pour. As you, as you go out. Um, following that, on July 29th, we have final cleaning. Um, in some of the photos you're about to see, you might, it might look a little messy, but don't worry. We will do clean everything up before we're done. Um, we, there's just a lot of work going on right now. Um, we're gonna be starting to assemble the classroom furniture on August 1st, or not, yeah, August 1st, sorry. Um, which we're expecting to take about three days, and then we're having our staff move-in day on August 3rd. Following that, we plan to have full access to teachers in their classrooms by August 8th, and then the first day of school will have a, will, would be considered our soft opening of the building, where it will be occupied, and we'll have students, uh, students being taught in classrooms. Um, and lastly, we have August 24th, which is our grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony. Next up, I wanted to just do a review of our, the primary construction activities that are ongoing right now and um, kind of what, what that exactly means for the project. So one of the, one of the specific challenges that we have really faced in the last month was the fiber cable. Um, the material delays due to supply chain have really made it difficult to acquire. So it took us over about four months to receive the actual cable for, uh, which is required for internet, data, phones, our PA speakers, basically everything in the building requires some form of uh, data connection nowadays. Um, luckily, we uh, received our, finally received the fiber cable last week. And I really do have to thank John Sparados for that because uh, he has a, a, con a connection with some of our some of the vendors and was able to really kind of spur that along. But that uh, the fiber cable is I definitely have at least one gray hair because of that. <laughs> um, and as I said, this go ahead. 
I just want to make sure I have my construction knowledge correctly. I'm assuming all of this cable is inside of the walls. Is that correct? Or most of it? Um, a lot of it is running cable trays. So it's really easy just to lay in cable trays. Uh, the, as I was going to get into what I guess, so a lot, a lot of times with construction, there's like that domino effect of it. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have this, you can't do this, mm -hmm. this, and that. And as we go through some of the pictures, you might see that, and I'll, I'll explain it too. But with the fiber cable, what really happened is you'll see some of the ceiling, some of the ceiling tiles and areas aren't okay. installed because we still need to access the area. And ceiling tiles go relatively fast. Okay. And following that, you want to finish your ceilings before you go to flooring. So yeah. basically, all of the uh, those items are on here, but we don't have any, any anything that uh, the a later delivery of fiber cable that's going to push us beyond our uh, scheduled and communicated dates. Okay, thank you. Um, along with that is the technology equipment. So one of the reasons why we needed that fiber cable is because we needed the time to install that technology equipment. Um, all of that, like projectors and wireless access points for Wi-Fi, um, require the fiber cable. So that's actually being installed right now and will be continue to be installed over the next two or three weeks. And is that the contractor or is that our staff? So uh, that is actually not Erickson Hall, who is our general contractor. We have a CMAS contract and we are providing that separately and kind of coordinating with Erickson Hall to have that installed. We get a better price, we get a better price on uh, those materials and installation sometimes through CMAS contracts. So just to maximize our dollars, it, it's the best way to go for this situation. Um, the next item I have is the casework and science islands. Uh, with our casework and science islands, if you, you might recall, we've throughout the project really fine-tuned these islands and casework uh, to meet our staff's needs in terms of the uh, orientation of the islands, the width of the islands, the height of the islands. So throughout the process, there's been several changes that we've made to the islands. And that's one of the reasons why it's one of the remaining items, because we couldn't get the materials and we're, install we're actively installing them now. Um, I would say casework is probably about 80 to 90% done um, with certain areas that we'll be finishing within the next week or two. Um, following that, we have flooring, which is being installed on all floors. And then the next big item that is always one of the last ones to really be covered in a building is the elevator. So the work in the elevator is complete and we're now scheduling our state inspector to come and certify the elevator. Um, as we're completing all of these items, we're also punch listing the building, which entails walking it, really finding those details and those items that need to be corrected by the contractor before we're able to release retention um, for the final payment. But we want to stay ahead of the punch list so that it's not a large list at the end of the project. We want to try to tackle things as we're wrapping everything up. So one of the, one, it is a big building. So one of the ways we're trying to split that up is we've already held the second floor uh, punch walk. We're, help, we're holding the third floor punch walk this week and then administration should be at the end of next week. Um, which kind of leads me into our methodol methodology for the uh, way we're trying to complete, complete the construction of this project. We're really prioritizing our classrooms and then working our way down from the second and third floors to our administrative areas. And as we go through some of the pictures, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So the first uh, set of pictures that I have here is the building exterior. I'm sure all of you guys have seen this from driving by. We have our uh, emblem on the left-hand side with our lettering that is also backlit for any nighttime. This will be the main entrance to the campus. And uh, like I said, this is one of the last concrete pours that is going right there. It will be on July 26th. And then going to the other side of the building on the exterior. So this is what the building will look like from the interior end of the campus. Um, really, you have a, a, a nice, nice uh, area for students to congregate and relax in between periods or congregate with their friends, talk with their friends or uh, just relax if they want, wanted to uh, when outside of class. Um, if you notice on this side of the building, it, 
previously didn't have as much of the blue accents, and that's why one of the reasons the stairs are able to really tie in the rest of the blue to the campus. And you can also see the uh, landscaping, the trees. We have several trees that are on all sides of the building. So uh, there is quite a bit of greenery with this project. Um, this is another, another picture kind of highlighting the Career Center and uh, that really interior path towards the building. I just have a quick question. So the tree uh, walking up the big stairs, the one in the middle, is that a tree that will grow large and provide a lot of shade? Ideally, it might take some time, and yeah, uh, yeah. but that is a planner area that yeah. that divides those two those two areas. And I always joke around with some of our consultants when we're picking landscaping. Um, we try to find uh, landscaping that doesn't attract bees, doesn't drop leaves, or doesn't drop seeds. <laughs> so I always say, no bees, no leaves, no seeds. It's so. artificial. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And then moving on to our classroom spaces. So these are, are starting off with our chemistry lab spaces. Um, the first picture on the left-hand side is a view from the back end of the room towards the front of the room, um, where you have islands on both, situated on both sides. And then on the right-hand picture, you can really see um, how the islands somewhat dogleg towards the front of the classroom. So we're really trying to create a mix of a, a lecture classroom and a lab environment all in one. Um, in the right-hand picture, you can also see the uh, roller shades that are installed in every classroom um, to reduce sunlight or darken the room if, if wanted. Do they still have the natural light? They still allow some natural light through, yes. And on the left-hand picture, you can see the dual projectors. So these rooms are really large. It, it, as I look at this picture, I, I feel like it's not doing justice for how large that marker board is. That is 24 feet of marker board, just. So you have two projectors with an eight foot marker board on each side with a teaching space in the middle. So ideally you would have, uh, be able to teach from the middle and have images on either side uh, for the entire classroom. And here's, a, here's another view, um, kind of really highlighting the orientation and some of the setup that went into the islands um, in, all of our, in all of our science classrooms. Now, just to clarify, there is one or two classrooms uh, with where they are situated in the building. They are linear islands, but for the most part, they are more like the lecture style in most of the classrooms. And CJ, they'll be are they high chairs? Yeah. So actually, that was one of the that was one of the concerns that uh, we reviewed with our teaching staff, and they requested a. I believe, I'm going off the top of my head, but I believe it's a 42 inch high uh, countertop which we had to clear through DSA in the state to approve because 42 is actually higher than what's allowable for ADA. So the way we have it set up when we're making that change is we have the front row at the standard 32 or 34, I'm around that area. Um, so, the, so the first row is slightly lower and then the back two are higher. Um, and it, it gives a more uniform look than um, if you've walked into some other classrooms, you might see like an area where there's a drop down and that's just the ADA area. But we really didn't want to have like a separate cutout area. We wanted more of a uniform look in all of our classrooms. And uh, in this next picture, this is one of our standard uh, classroom spaces uh, with just would be teaching like math or any other subject that doesn't really require the full chemistry setup. Um, so you still have that same 24 feet of marker board in the front with a tack wall in the back. In these classrooms, since they are not qu quite as large as the other ones, we only have one uh, projector in the center of the room. And now moving on to our, some of our more uh, administrative or, and corridor areas. So as I was saying earlier, we're really prioritizing the classrooms in terms of completion as we get going. Um, the last thing I would want to have happen is if we hit a snag and we have the administration done and not the classrooms. So we want to make sure that while we expect everything to be fully completed, that we're also prioritizing the classrooms ahead of the administrative or any other areas. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see that the tile is installed. Um, and this is the front lobby. Sorry, I didn't quite explain that. 
the front lobby main entrance to the building. Um, this is where our, our parents will first come onto campus. As you can see, the casework that goes on the front uh, reception desk is not quite installed, but will be installed this week. We do have all of our materials at this time, so it is just a matter of installing and uh, getting it done. So we're really pushing, and um, like I said, that'll be installed this week. Our flooring is already in. I didn't want to include the picture on the right-hand side without showing that there's actually the flooring underneath there as well. Now, this area is some of our uh, staff lounge areas. We have one on each floor, we have the second and third floor. Wow. And then there is also an administrative lounge type area on the first floor as well. So in these areas, we have a, it's still a, it's still a uh, vinyl tile, but it's more of a wood or a more um, homey, I guess, type look, where teachers will be able to, uh, on their lunch break or for whatever reason, use this space to, uh, to get, get a break from, from their day. Um, we've ordered furniture for this area as well. We have round tables with chairs. And in these areas, there's also a single occupancy restroom in each one uh, for staff to use as well. And like a microwave and a coffee maker and... There is, we aren't putting that there, but okay. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. all, of, all of our electrical circuits are set up with dedicated circuits intending for something to that effect to be there. Awesome, thank you. I love the bathroom in there. That's really nice addition. And uh, so with staying with our administrative and corridor areas, uh, on the left-hand side, you see one of our work rooms, which is in between our, usually our chemistry labs. So this is the area that will be used to store chemicals, beakers, anything that you don't want cluttering up your classroom, you'll have easily accessible in the room right next door. So typically each set of two chemistry classrooms will share one workroom. And we also have ordered furniture. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. Considering you've been sharing a lab. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's beautiful. And in the, when we order the furniture for these rooms, we actually, from this picture, because it's so long, you can't really tell how wide the room is. We actually have tables that will have a that will be lining up the center of that room, and they'll be on wheels too, so they can easily take items from these workrooms and wheel them right into their classroom. And on the right-hand side, you can see the, one of the main corridors. As I was previously saying, the uh, ceiling tiles aren't installed because we're actively installing the fiber right now as well. Um, so that is one of the corridors on the second floor, I believe, that students will be going down uh, to reach their classrooms, and again, because of these rooms are somewhat long, it almost makes them appear uh, skinnier than they are. That corridor is quite wide, so. And now this is the uh, first floor corridor in our administrative area where they were actively uh, installing flooring yesterday and today. You could see on the, in the center, on the left picture in the center, you could see the white demarcation on the floor that is then prepping the floor, installing tile as we go. Um, the X's on the windows, so these windows get a window treatment. It's kind of like a film that fogs the window. So you can still see if somebody's in there, but you can't necessarily see in there. It almost creates like a shadow effect. Um, so a lot of our administrative areas will have, a, will have a fogged window glass, and that is being installed as well. And our media center. So as, as I was saying, we're prioritizing classrooms. Um, and we're working towards our administrative areas and our media center. Really, there's so much work going on in these areas right now. I had to ask people to clear out of the way to take a picture, and that's why it looks so <laughs> messy. Uh, <laughs> but um, the ceilings are actually very similar to what we have at the district office, where there are the floating cloud ceilings. So that's why it look, the ceiling looks less done than it actually is. All of the grid is there, and it's the same type of situation where you're just putting those ceiling tiles in and you have a floating ceiling with gaps in between with the, uh, the ceiling painted black. And I love the lights. The lights are really nice. They're so really cool. They're really nice strip lights. And then also our uh, projectors and everything, uh, are electric. they drop down electrically from the clouds too and they raise back up. And the furniture that we've been able to order too will be more like 
I don't want to say sofa styles, but uh, there'll so be that along with desks and other things. Mm -hmm. So not your more of a student center, if you would, as well right. as a media center yeah. where they can uh, do study groups, et cetera. So it'll be really nice once you see all that come together as well. That's awesome. Exactly. So, and as you can see that, if you on the left hand side, you can see that little wall that is not quite complete yet. That's uh, also our casework, where we'll be having our um, who whoever is. Uh, monitoring the media center or book storage area, that's where their desk will be. Um, as I said earlier, uh, we are working through our casework fo and flooring as we go through, through the rest of the building. In the fabrication and computer lab, so on the left-hand side, we have our computer lab, which has a lot of fiber running through it. So that's why the ceiling is open in that room as well. And we are actively installing flooring in there today as well. On the right hand side, we have our fabrication lab, which has, through construction, we are using that area as somewhat of a storage area right now because it has the overhead doors, which allows easy access for us to bring materials in and out. So again, these are, the first floor is very actively completing. So again, that's why these pictures are a little bit more cluttered. We were prioritizing classrooms. And then lastly, we have our restrooms. So these are the restrooms on the second and third floor. You can see that uh, we have one, one uh, shared sink that has faucets all the way running through it with I believe five stalls in each rest in the girls' restroom and I believe three in the boys. And you can also see the tile and the finishes um, are really, really nice tile and the tile is, uh, a material that will be long lasting and won't won't erode or decay over time. And that is really it with where we're at. CJ <laughs> CJ, this is absolutely incredible. And I'm predicting that Nicole's brain is now over there figuring out how to make the general community understand this is where your bond dollars went. And I'm sure that'll come out as we go, but I, you need a vacation. You're doing a great <laughs> job. Thank you. No problem, it's my pleasure. Mrs. Davidson. Thank you, CJ. I can't even, so looking back, are you glad you took this job? <laughs> I, I think it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Wow. So this, this is, is a, this project is a huge project for the community, the school district, and I'm not gonna lie, also for me, I'm really proud of the work that our whole team has put into <laughs> it. And we're really trying to really wrap it up nicely for the start of the school year. Well, you and your team did a fantastic job, and Elvia, there were a lot of bills to pay, but I, I can't even, this is your Sistine Chapel. You are Michelangelo, <laughs> so thank you thank very, you so much. very much. Yes, Mrs. Gatuli. I remember when we said that we were going to open for this school year, and I remember thinking, gee, I wonder if we're going to push our date back so we make that <laughs> statement correct. Um, and I really, really applaud the decision that was made to do the classrooms as opposed to the administration building. And it's not that I don't appreciate what our administrators do, but I can just think of the excitation that the students and the teachers will have going into that building and just the, getting so excited. I'm going to be here. I'm going to learn. I'm, you know, I'm going to be able to teach. I don't have to share. Um, I think it's going to be really, really impactful on the staff and on the students. And I know that our administrators will be incredibly grateful and happy when they can get in there too. And our robotics, um, and you know, and our engineering and all that down. But I do believe getting those classrooms done is the way to do it. Uh, because we're here to teach kids and that's where it's taking place. And you have done a fabulous job. And of course you're happy you took the job. Now it's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And just, just to add, uh, all, we do expect it all to be complete, but as we as we are scheduling those items, we want to make sure we have our priorities completing ahead first, because especially with the last two years, you never know what's going to happen. So we just want to make sure we're getting the things that are our top priority done first. And I know that we've already had an email from somebody in the public asking when the public would be able to tour the building. And so I would imagine that'd be something we would do at the grand opening or after the grand opening or. So it's actually my superintendent's report tonight. Okay. I'm happy will to share. 
Uh, the ribbon cutting, as you uh, heard uh, Mr. Nolan share, it was going to be on August 24th. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where you invite the dignitaries, uh, elected officials, et cetera. And then soon after that, at the same time, so let's say it starts at four, we'll probably do what, we, what I'm calling a community open house uh, at 5.30 or 6 p.m. Um, and allowing them now to kind of uh, tour uh, the STEM building the same, on the same day, just a, maybe about an hour and a half later. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I know we were um, a, a little disappointed that we couldn't be there, but completely seeing the pictures, understand. And um, if there is any chance before uh, school opens that we can, um, the board can take a tour, that'd be great. But we understand that the work needs to be done and I, focused on. I think there will be, and I'll actively communicate that with Andrew. And maybe um, if we go back to that first slide, that might even, or the, the milestone the slide rather, um, might be able to help us kind of earmark a certain time. Because um, in order for us to have all five, we'll just make a special board meeting and agendize it rather than trying to schedule two of you, two of you, and one of you by yourself. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Really, that first week of August, I think, might be a, a possibility, um, depending if you don't mind them assembling furniture or people no. moving stuff in. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So we can look at our calendars over dinner. And, okay. Uh, look for on September That's great. first week of August. Great idea. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, CJ. Mm -hmm. um, just, I, I can't even imagine. And it's like 30,000 square feet? 80, 80, 80, 86,000 square feet. That is that is a humongous a humongous undertaking a humongous it's project. It's almost the size of most middle school campuses or an elementary campus. You can think of it as that thirty classrooms, but then you have all that other CTE and administration, et cetera. Um, so in some ways, it's about the size of a, a many middle school campuses in one building. Well, I will say that I I do think when we were looking at the design, and I know a couple of us were on the board, and there was this really big push to go three stories, and the and the 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 footprint that it would take and what it would allow us to do and then continue to be able to allow us to in campus rather than going two stories I think was really was really brilliant yeah and the presence that it'll give the, the yes. street presence oh it already uh, does additionally uh, the building itself can act as a security barrier yep. as opposed to having to have the entire front row of that campus with a with a black rock, black wrought iron fence um, so it, it'll it'll it provides a few different uh, features that it'll uh, enhance. Spectacular. Sure. Thank you very much. And so I do believe um, seeing no public comment, no public comment cards, uh, then we will retire into closed session and then we will um, come back for the rest of our business meeting at 6 p.m. Thank you.